I'm not asking for sympathy. Scratch that. What's your name? Uh, Nathaniel Anthony Ayers Jr. You only got two strings. I've had a few setbacks. Me too. Now, the Soloist is a film that is based on the relationship between Steve Lopez, an LA Times reporter, and my brother, Nathaniel Anthony Ayers. Robert Downey Jr., if you can believe this, plays me in the movie The Soloist. There's nothing that gets America's attention like a good story. A powerful, compelling story that moves hearts and minds and souls. He has a very severe form of schizophrenia. When it's firing, you can see the rage in his eyes. That's not Nathaniel. That's the disease. I have seen my brother uh, deal with mental illness for over 30 years. Nathaniel, as I knew him growing up, was a, a very wonderful young man, very kind-hearted. Then had the opportunity to actually audition for Juilliard. And uh, he was awarded a scholarship. He did well there. And then I remember going to pick him up from school and I noticed that um, the Nathaniel that I knew growing up wasn't the same person. Steve Lopez was, you know, just really in need of a story. And uh, he was kind of walking around L.A. and he heard a violin. And when he actually got to the point of where this music was coming from, he noticed uh, my brother, Nathaniel. And he's playing a violin that is missing two strings a beaten up, scratched violin. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what his story is, but this guy's gotta be a column. I saw him scratching names on the sidewalk. And when I asked who those names were, he said those were his classmates at Juilliard. And so then the story became, okay, how do you get from Juilliard to playing a two string violin in downtown LA and living on Skid Row at night? And uh, I wrote the first column, and it took off from there. Readers reacted in ways that I didn't anticipate. Readers donated instruments to him, and he ended up wandering the streets with all of these instruments. He had a couple of violins, a cello, and I was worried he was going to be attacked. He was going to be mugged, um, especially at night when he retreated to Skid Row, where thousands of people live on the streets. So I really worried that he was going to be harmed, and I made the connection with Lamp Community. They came out and they had a look and they began this connection and relationship with Nathaniel. So he's now spent the last three years living out of this apartment. He's got a little music studio that was created for him at LAMP. Um, we go to concerts, he's got these buddies in the LA Philharmonic and music has become even more a part of his life. Thank you for coming to the official national launch of the Nathaniel Anthony Ayers Foundation. The mission of the foundation is to fund arts programs at mental health and arts organizations that serve the mental, mentally ill, and we place a special emphasis on serving programs that feature the artistically gifted. The California Endowment helped us because they believe in our mission, and uh, they saw where we could take what our goals are to, a, to the next level. We look after each other. I'm his friend. When this film hits the screen, Americans are now talking about this issue even more than where they were before. This is the decade for mental illness to come out of the closet and to be destigmatized. As, as domestic violence has, as cancer has, as child abuse has, this, this is now the moment. And I think this is the kind of story uh, that can really uh, uh, change awareness, uh, move hearts and minds, and even move public policy. I've found that with the Nathaniel story from the beginning in the column in the book, is that if you address it as a policy thing, you lose people. But if you tell, a, if you share a human drama, a compelling narrative, that tucks all of those things in along the way, you can maybe reach people, and I think the movie does that.